chemistry lecture number 3083, demonstration of chemical reaction rates. Um, in this lecture, I'm going to show you a chemical reaction to demonstrate what we mean by a reaction rate, how long it takes a chemical reaction to occur. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to mix some solutions. So we're going to take two solutions. One solution has iodate, uh, the other has sulfate, hydrogen, ion, and starch and uh, we're going to mix the solutions together and what happens is that iodate, sulfate, and hydrogen iron are mixed, the elemental form of iodine is made. Now this is the uh, net reaction. Um, iodate ion in solution A mixes with uh, sulfite and then hydrogen ion and then it produces elemental iodine and that bonds with starch and it has a dark appearance. And we're gonna <coughs> start by mixing a reference solution. And we'll be doing several reactions <coughs> and we'll compare all the reactions with the reference solution. So the reference solution just has two teaspoons of solution A and then two teaspoons of solution B, and we'll record the reaction time and compare everything to the uh, reaction time of the reference solution. Okay. So. Alright, so there's solution A. And then there's our timer. Let me get solution B. All right, so we pour that in, we hit the timer, and now we're going to see how long it takes for uh, A and B mixed together to produce iodine. So when a dark color appears, that's when, when we know the reaction is complete. And we'll have an idea of the reaction rate of the uh, reference. And there. Okay, so it took 23 seconds for the reference solution to uh, produce the reaction. <clears throat> and uh, now we'll do things to uh, change the rate of the reaction. We're going to slow it down and then speed it up. Now the next reaction we use a concentrated solution mixture. Uh, the concentrated solution mixture will have, um, whoops, sorry, hold on. Yeah, we have to record the reaction time for uh, the reference solution, 23 seconds. Okay, uh, now we're going to uh, do the next reaction and it's going to use a concentrated solution mixture. Uh, the concentration solution mixture will have additional uh, sodium iodate added to it. Uh, it'll have a richer concentration of iodate. Uh, the concentrated solution mixture means there's more reactant per volume, and solution A has more iodate in it than normal. Okay. So, there's solution A, and it's more concentrated. It has more iodate in it per volume. So this is a more concentrated mixture of uh, iodate that we're using. Solution A is more concentrated this time. Okay, so we've added solution B, hit the timer, and let's see how long it takes. So is it going to be less than 23 seconds or more than 23 seconds? If it's less than 23 seconds, it means the reaction occurs more quickly. Oh, there we go. 11 seconds. So the reaction is faster when solution A is more concentrated. So let's go ahead and record the reaction time. 11 seconds. <clears throat> the next reaction will occur at lower concentration. Uh, to make a lower concentration, we took uh, solution A and added extra water to it. Uh, we diluted it so the amount of iodate per volume is less. Alright, 
So we've diluted solution A. We've added two extra teaspoons of water, so there's not as much uh, iodate per unit volume. <coughs> All right, so here's solution A, and it's less concentrated. We've added water to it, so it is a less concentrated solution compared to the reference solution. There's less iodate per unit volume uh, in solution A. Alright, so we'll pour in solution B with the timer. So will it take more than 23 seconds or less than 23 seconds? So if it's less concentrated, um, well, we should predict something different should happen. It shouldn't be 23, it should either be above or below that. Alright, we're at 21 seconds, 23. Okay, so it's taking longer than 23 seconds. So it looks like when you uh, dilute the solution or use less concentrated solutions, uh, the reaction occurs more slowly. It looks like we diluted it maybe a little bit too much. Is this reaction going to occur? If we get to a minute 30 and it doesn't happen, then uh, maybe we diluted it too much. Maybe no reaction is going to occur. And, oh, there we go. Right there, a minute six seconds. So it took 66 seconds for the reaction to occur. So the reaction is slower when solution A is less concentrated. Okay. So. Reaction time is 66 seconds, and we'll move on to the next one. So the next reaction uses a cold solution. Uh, we just chill the liquids before we mix them. Uh, the liquids will be at lower temperature. So it's just the same uh, concentrations of solution A and B as the uh, reference, but the difference between the reference solutions and the cold solutions is that uh, the cold solutions have been chilled. So, right now I'm running to the refrigerator to get my chilled solutions out, and I'm also setting up the next one. Okay, here we are. So, two solutions that we hope have chilled uh, enough, and hopefully we've mixed the solutions correctly. So we'll get ready to mix these. Now, with a chilled solution, we predict that it should take uh, longer than 23 seconds. At colder temperatures, reactions occur more slowly. But uh, we'll see if that's what actually occurs. Um, there may have been an error in preparing these solutions, so I don't know how this is going to work. Okay. So we've mixed the solutions. We're just waiting for it to turn dark to indicate the presence of the iodine. And whoops, 18 seconds. Okay, so that's not what was supposed to happen. It should have taken longer. Um, but apparently what happened was um, I probably didn't chill the solutions enough. Um, I probably should have left them in the refrigerator longer. And there also may have been errors in how I mixed uh, and prepared the solutions. I may have made them more concentrated by accident. So that's a failed experiment. Sorry about that. These demonstrations don't always uh, work, but uh, if I were to redo it, I'm sure I could get it to work. All right, well, let's move on to the warm solutions. Two teaspoons of solution A warmed, two solutions of solution B warmed. So it's just like the reference solution, only the solutions have been warmed up. <coughs> so I heated these in the microwave. I put them in uh, two bowls. Um, here we are. So the one on the left is the uh, solution A, and the one on the right is solution B. So let's see what happens when we mix the uh, warm solutions. Yeah. Solution A and B are mixed. And we hit the timer. And hopefully it will take less than 
23 seconds for this reaction to occur. When they're warmer, the solution should occur more quickly. Oh, and there we go. Okay, so that took 14 seconds, which is less than 23 seconds. So when the solutions are warmer, uh, the reaction occurs more quickly. Okay, so that one worked. <laughs> so the reaction is faster when the solutions are warmed up. Okay, there's one more type of reaction we'll do involving hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide decomposes into water and oxygen very, very slowly. But um, we can make the reaction go faster uh, if we use a catalyst. A catalyst is a substance that makes a reaction go faster. Uh, the catalyst itself does not get consumed in the reaction. It interacts with the reactants and then leaves intact. Uh, the catalyst can be used over and over again. It's not destroyed in the chemical reaction or turned into anything else. So here's hydrogen peroxide and very, very, very slowly uh, it's breaking apart into water and oxygen, but it occurs so microscopically slowly um, that you really can't see it. Um, but it does occur, albeit, you know, really, really, really slowly. Um, but if we take a catalyst uh, we can make it go faster. And yeast contains uh, a catalyst that can make the reaction go uh, more quickly. And you can just take uh, ordinary yeast, uh, bread yeast. Um, and I think I have a jar of it somewhere. Let's see. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is, see, here's my yeast. And I'm going to pour the yeast into the bowl. And what I'll do is I'll pour the hydrogen peroxide on top of the yeast. So there's my yeast. It contains the catalyst that will make the reaction go more quickly. So it's a very slow reaction without the catalyst. Um, but we can make it go faster with the, the catalyst that's in yeast. So it's going to start to uh, foam up, and uh, the foam will contain oxygen bubbles. And we can make the oxygen bubbles uh, help light something on fire. Okay, so see how it's starting to foam up? Those foam bubbles contain oxygen. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to light a wood splint and blow it out and then take the hot smoldering wood splint and stick it into the oxygen bubbles and reignite the wood splint. So we're just trying to show that uh, that is indeed oxygen being produced uh, in the uh, foamy uh, bubbles that you see being made there. So it takes me a while to get the uh, wood splint lit of the darn safety uh, things. There we go. So it's lit. I blow it out. I stick it in and it reignites. So those uh, bubbles do contain oxygen. Let me try it again. Unlit. Stick it in and it reignites. And that's one of my favorite uh, chemistry demonstrations where you ignite a wood splint uh, just by sticking it into oxygen bubbles like that. See? It's a lot of fun. Okay. <clears throat> so let's go over what uh, should have occurred. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, what should have occurred is that at higher concentrations, uh, the reaction occurs more quickly. If the reaction is at lower concentration, uh, it goes more slowly. That occurred. The cold solution didn't quite work. Um, but with the warm solution, uh, we did get a faster reaction. And the warm solution was faster than the cold solution. And the catalyst with the hydrogen peroxide, that actually worked. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Chemistry Lecture number 83, Demonstration of Chemical Reaction Rates.